My name's Helen Beckett. I'm editor of the Business Value Exchange here at Discover London. There's a real frisson of excitement around the manufacturing zone here, not least because there's a consensus about the value and logic of doing connected manufacturing. Nowadays, the questions are more about how do players go about that? And here to discuss all that is Martin Reiner of Enterprise Services. Hi, Martin. Hello, Helen. Good to have you here and to talk through this huge challenge that all the manufacturing players now face. They all, as we've said, have a huge amount of legacy equipment, unique configurations. They've been doing this job for years and years. And now there's a digital opportunity. They don't know where to start. So when we started to become more industry focused and relevant uh, for the market and for our customers two years ago, we were starting to look at market drivers. Market drivers such as complexity in supply chains and value chains that are really turning into very fluid value networks or the benefit, the value, and the risk in, in data. Uh, and we have heard, of course, about the demanding customer and consumer that really is going to define all of our next uh, moves. And when we were looking to those drivers, it became clear that we needed a totally new style of manufacturing, a new style of manufacturing that is more integrated, more seamless, and that is clearly driven and enabled by digital technology. So what we did is uh, we created a, an ecosystem that is totally integrated where all components such as plants, products, people, yes systems and processes. This integration which we call connected manufacturing uh, is achieved by a convergence of technologies. A convergence of technologies such as IT and OT, operational technology, but also adding of course communication technology and digital technology. New data sources are available with enhanced sensor technology and also more affordable technology. The true challenge is, is really to embrace all those multiple data sources and to link it up in a very dynamic data analytics platform because that enables to turn the data into information which enables you to make faster and better business decisions. Either to streamline your, your operations or to be very quick in responding to market changes in putting out new business models to the market or just you know, switching between product configurations in, in your production. So Martin, how should manufacturers describe and approach their digital transformation? What suggestions do you have for them? So first I think manufacturers, they have a very good starting position because they have lots of experience and proper skill in integrating and managing technologies, also technologies across different ages, going from legacy into state-of-the-art technology. And now it's just about adding the next generation of technology, which is digital technology. Yeah. So with that, I think the starting point is good. However, legacy can also be a limitation. It can be a boundary. And at the end, the challenge is not to get a new piece of digital technology to work. The true challenge is really to seamlessly and securely integrate digital technology into your existing landscape to make enhanced, streamlined and more flexible business processes to work. So this is the story I'm hearing, yes, seamless end-to-end -end connectivity, not getting too hung up on the technology itself, but making it in integrated, supporting new business processes. What can manufacturers teach other industries about multimodal IT? Because that does sound like you're having to integrate perhaps these new digital technologies with old ways of doing things. How do you, do you get those two to work together? Important point, because digital technology actually um, has to be based on much faster life cycles. So release cycles, if you like, uh, should be days, if not hours, in digital technology versus months, if not years, in traditional system technology such as ERP, business warehouses, uh, let alone the operational technology that can be very, very rigid. But again, in manufacturing, naturally, you always had very high sophisticated technology in use in R&D, for instance. They were moving faster and more dynamically than traditional IT, ERP and production. Uh, we're moving so there is experience there how to kind of combine how to synchronize two different life cycles of technology a slower one a traditional one that has to follow uh, versus a very very quick fast and responsive one around digital technology that's interesting to hear because often you do think of manufacturers as being behind the curve when it comes to digitization and yet here you are saying actually they have something to teach other sectors they're good at having different speeds of technology and keeping those going together yes and i think uh, Manufacturing as such hasn't been treated uh, with the potential and, and the light, if you like, over the last 10 years, which I think was wrong uh, because the potential now via digital technology, via digitalization is tremendous in manufacturing. And it's, it's really you know, turning out to be 
the most sexy industry of today and tomorrow because of that tremendous opportunity. And, and just because you're you know, in legacy, just because you're low-tech manufacturing, that does not mean that you shouldn't be you know, part of that journey. It could even be that you know, the lowest tech manufacturer has most of the opportunity in finding the right piece of technology that makes a new business model work or that significantly streamlines their supply chain or value chain. So what you describe there are many different silos in, in the manufacturing world. Very hard to bring those all together and make them work seamlessly, but I understand you, Enterprise Services has a roadmap to do just that. Yes, uh, we've been working together with many customers over the last two to three years on, on real digital initiatives and digital roadmap type of uh, programs. And based on that experience and based on that learning, we have developed a standard methodology, a standard recipe, if you like, for manufacturing companies, how to start, how to initiate, and, and how to get traction with their digital agenda. And uh, we have really figured out a few, let's call them key success factors or very important topics uh, that needed to be considered, like understand your baseline and understand your maturity. And the baseline has to be a measured baseline in business terms, in business performance terms. Uh, number two, your roadmap should be a very holistic one because digital transformation is not about technology, it's not about IT, it's about business strategy. So a digital roadmap has to be aligned with your five years plus business plan and business strategy. And, and with that, uh, it's of course broad and it, it has to be very comprehensive, covering all aspects of your business. However, when it's about how to start, then you need to go back to find something which enables you to start small and simple so that uh, you will be able to put quick results on the table because that will be very compelling and convincing for the rest of the organization for your boardroom to keep on investing in that direction even creating a self-funding probably cycle um, when your first initiative is for instance producing growth revenue or is driving out cost or is improving quality in your production uh, that's very compelling and then you know the money will fall in place for further initiatives so number three stakeholder management um, there isn't a single function, um, a single corporate function that can solely own and run a digital agenda or roadmap. So it has to be an integration of corporate stakeholders uh, across all critical functions, such as IT, of course, but also operational technology in production, marketing, supply chain. And of course, also the boardroom has to be in strong sponsorship and support. What is Enterprise Services' key differentiator? So when you think about our history, where we have been implementing, designing, transforming, but also operating, you know, decades of generations of technology for our customers, especially in manufacturing with our great heritage, uh, going back with Hewlett Packard, but also going back with EDS uh, on the other side of the house. So with that experience, you know, we know how to combine different layers of technology, but we also know how to combine different ages of technology. So with the digital world now uh, adding probably the most exciting dimension in technology, uh, we are best positioned also to keep our view on enterprise architecture, but still finding a way how you seamlessly and securely integrate digital technology going forward. And if you combine that with our ability to, to really uh, detect and collect huge amount of data with our data analytics platform, where we have industrialized solutions available like our converged plant infrastructure. And then that makes us truly a powerful partner uh, along the way because we can clearly operate across the entire life cycle. We can help you to define, to design your digital roadmap. We can help you to pilot and to test, but we also know how to cut over from tests into production in a seamless and safe way while the rest of your business is all up and running because you have us as the operator as a safe pair of hands. And I think this, especially for manufacturing companies, is a key differentiator and will always be the number one priority of CEOs. Stability, operational stability and quality. So Enterprise Services, one foot in the old world of traditionality, the new digital roadmap as well, so a real premium partner to take them into that new world of connected manufacturing. Thank you so much, Martin Reiner. You're welcome.